six past the hour here in a Friday lunch hour live stream edition here inside the vault. I'm Bobby Trossett alongside Sarah Ellison. Jack, a jam-packed episode coming up for you in the next uh, 40 minutes to, to 60 minutes. We'll see a little bit of fret, fret uh, it's kind of, as you can hear, I'm a little all over the place here because the Ravens via Jeff Zarebeck just made a signing. So we were trying to kind of. We got to, we had to pull that. We were literally about to hit go. And then that news came. So we were like, ah, we got to bring that in. So yeah, Yeah. which we will, which we will. The Ravens are signing cornerback, a cornerback, which we'll get to in just a bit, but we'll begin with yesterday's news. And that's Josh Reynolds, a free agent wide receiver who played last season. The Ravens actually saw him last season for the Detroit lions. What his visit today could potentially mean for the Ravens and, and what kind of trend we're seeing right now at that position a crucial Rashad Bateman decision is looming in terms of what uh, Eric DaCosta has to look at in the front office from a fifth-year option standpoint. Some cornerback film from uh, NFL Live that I know you took a look at. Kind of some rumors swirling around Stefan Gilmore. Is that right? Uh, more just opinions and where people would fit best. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So that and more is, is what we have coming up in this live stream. This is brought to you and presented by our friends and and one of this month's small business Patreon title sponsors, s Laundry Services. They are a laundry and dry cleaning pickup service and delivery service in Baltimore and surrounding areas. You can visit cleanmylaundry.com to learn more by visiting the show notes below. All right, so let's get to it, partner. This came out yesterday, a day after the Michael Gallup report came down, and this comes from Adam Schefter that Lions free agent wide receiver Josh Reynolds is on his way to Baltimore to visit the Ravens today. 6-3, here are the the actual intangibles and measurables. 6'3, 194, played his college football at Texas A&M. He was drafted by the LA Rams in the fourth round back in 2017 and has been with, again, the Detroit Lions most recently. What was your first reaction? Uh, well, before I do that, just because I don't want to get too off off the where where we're going with the slides, I think if we put all the facts out first, and then I'll give my opinion because I think sometimes I can you know talk for a minute on that. So, uh, but you know, it's another physical wide receiver. You know, got the big body that you're looking for, Bobby. That six three kind of body. Uh, Hundred ninety four. He's he's slender though because remember Gallup was six one and and weighed a little bit more. So, but he's he's that tall guy for sure. Um, he's definitely been durable uh, for for pretty much his whole career. Um, played in pretty much all the games he had in 2021, where he kind of switched teams mid season, uh, so didn't play all the games. But I mean, has been pretty fairly durable for his his whole career. Last year with the Detroit, with Jared Goff, put up as the number three wide receiver, 608 yards. Or excuse me, yeah, 608 yards on 40 receptions, 64 targets. So, kind of, kind of, kind of the mold that the Ravens had been looking for. So, um, and I guess that's really where my my reaction is, Bobby. Um, between Gallup and Al Reynolds, I think we're seeing a trend, right? It's just two. Maybe, yeah. maybe we'll find out midstream that they've got another wide receiver coming in, right? So, but to me, the trend is that they're looking for a veteran before they go to the draft. They got already a kind of, they've got three guys on their rookie contracts with Zay and Rashad and um, Tylen Wallace. And they only got one kind of veteran with, with Aguilar. And then you're going to go to the draft and you're probably going to add another young wide receiver. So that's the first thing they're doing. They're looking for a veteran. Number two, they're looking for a physical guy, which, you know, between Gallup and Reynolds, that's what we're seeing. Number three, they're looking for an inexpensive guy, which is what these guys would be. Um, I can't imagine you'd be much more than, you know, five million a year because that's uh, kind of the wave of free agency that we're in. And that's what, you know, you don't want to pay a third or slash fourth wide receiver more than that. And the last thing, Bobby, and, and I reiterate what I said yesterday, but hopefully I can illuminated a little bit more clearly is they're not looking to threaten. And I'm saying this from like internally kind of a political, 
and lack for lack of a better word, like the politics of what you do with your top two wide receivers. Okay. They are not looking to bring in a veteran that is going to threaten Rashad Bateman. And the reason why I believe that uh, is, is for a couple reasons. One, they've said several times Rashad and Zay is their top two guys. And by the way, I believe them. I believe them. Now the draft could always fall a certain way that they end up going out and getting the massive big, you know, who knows, who knows what could happen in the draft. But I think they're not looking to threaten Rashad Bateman and, and because of the turmoil they've had in the past with them. So one way I kind of want to like illuminate that is I like this uh, back and forth. And I love that Jeff, uh, and I try to do this too. Jeff out of all the reporters in Baltimore is really engaging and it makes you just love him more. But uh, last week he kind of had this conversation with, with this follower of his Chris Stables. And I thought both sides were um, clear and direct with their points of view, but also never got personal, which is my favorite debate. It's really what real debate is. But Chris was arguing that wide receiver was a bigger need than cor uh, than cornerback or some of the other needs. Uh, I don't think he was saying more than, than an offensive line, but definitely he was saying more than cornerback. And so Chris says this, he says, uh, we have better players at cornerback than we have at wide receiver. And in this draft, you would want to get the premier talent at that position because even though it's a deep wide receiver class, you still want to get the best talent that is a need. So that's his argument for wide receiver or cornerback. And Jeff comes back strongly. 100% disagree, Jeff says. I look at it as pass catchers. He said, give me Flowers, Bateman, Aguilar, Andrews, and Likely any day over what you see at cornerback which on the outside right now is just Stevens and Marlon Humphrey. So, you know, especially if you're going to add in the tight ends, which a lot of fans disagree with. They want like a true wide receiver, not just tight ends. But in Jeff's point of view, he says, give me that group over what you have at cornerback. And if I agree, if you're bringing in those other guys. Uh, but I still would even say Flowers and Bateman versus Stevens and Marlon. Uh, they're more experienced. I'd, I'd take Stevens and Marlon, but I think – if you add in the tight ends, you, you probably have more. But then this is where it gets good, and it's really what the point I've been trying to make. So Chris comes back. He, he says, we had the best defense in a long time with a group of good players at corner. You can get away with that, but you can't get away. But what you can't get away with is depending on players like Rashad, who has yet to have a good season and be healthy for a full season. So this is really the polarizing thing that's going on in Ravens flock right now, right? What? It's Rashad Bateman. We feel great about the trajectory of Zay, but Rashad has had three years. Yes, two of them were injured. Maybe last year he wasn't prioritized the way you'd like, but it's been three years. And if he was really like going to be the guy, he would have found a way last year, even with, with the other guys on, on, the, uh, on the roster. So Jeff comes back and he comes back strong. And this is the one that, even though he's just replying, this is one that everybody loves. So they started retweeting it. So it got a lot of look eyeballs on it, even though it was just a reply. Okay. Jeff says, maybe they should try to throw the ball to Bateman. When he's open. Prioritize getting him involved. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Look at the number of targets Bateman, Aguilar, OBJ likely got last year. Yeah. Give me a, give me a CB because we know they'll be able to utilize that. So his argument is none of those guys had a lot of targets, right? A Aguilar was kind of around the same as Bateman. He did more with them. OBJ, he's he said, hey, don't forget about me now that he's on free, free agency. He's like, I didn't get a ton of opportunities. Not that he was ever complaining. He was a selfless player. But Jeff's point is, is like, this is the offense we're in, even in a year where we emphasize passing more. So he's like, that's why he wants a cornerback. But so it's within the context of arguing cornerback or wide receiver being a bigger need, but I'm pulling it in the context of what you're talking about with Josh Reynolds, Josh Reynolds and Gallup. I believe what Jeff is saying here, what he's arguing, prioritize Bateman. I believe that's what they think inside the building. We're not going to bring in a veteran that's, that, that Bateman himself is going to look at and be like, oh, so you guys don't believe in me. That's what I think oh, man. like that. That's what I think is happening inside the building because it's been, you know, not the smoothest relationship in the past. 
So yes, I think they're targeting cheaper wide receivers like they usually do. But I think this year there's an added element that they've told Rashad, you're going to get a bigger opportunity. We're going to go all in with you. And here's how we're proving it, that we're bringing in guys that are number threes and sure is some insurance for you, but they're not coming in and, and saying, give me the ball like OBJ. Like they felt like they needed to do with OBJ last year, right? So that's why I think these guys that they're bringing in, everybody's complaining that they're mid, mid, mid. Sure, that's why they're number threes. And even though I don't fully believe in, in Rashad, and again, I don't call him a bust and I'm not saying he can't do it, but for me, the best I could project for Rashad is about 800 yards, three or four touchdowns next year. If he, if he, if he's, if I'm wrong, I'm happy to be wrong and I'll say it. But even with them involving him more, I still, I think even with that, I still say 800, three or four touchdowns. Sarah, my like internally right now, as and you, and you talked about this yesterday, and I thought about it yesterday, and then I I did a personal video about it, which we're going to get to in just a second with the big decision that's looming. Uh, related to his fifth year option, but I keep going back to like this, this word that you're using as, as threatened. You know, mm -hmm. you believe that, that the Ravens are doing, want to do their best are doing their due diligence because of what's happened in the past, because of the drama, because of the disconnect at times, because of things that have played out in the media, that they are working diligently to ensure that he's not threatened internally. My, the inner competitor is stewing right now. For in sure. me. Yeah. Because, because while I haven't played in the National Football League and I never will, um, <laughs> like competition breeds excellence, and we're gonna we're gonna kind of like hop, skip, and jump around, like coddling him almost. Like if that's their organizational view of where he is now, entering year four. There's no way I'm picking up his fifth year option. Like, come on. What is, I mean, this is, you guys are the one percenters of the world when it comes to athletics. And I don't know. I just, like, my radar goes off as soon as you, and again, that's, and, and you may not, I don't think you're, you may not be off base with that whatsoever. I could be wrong. It's just my gut. It's what, what I'm, what I'm picking up on. But I just get irked by that. Like, that irks me, not your opinion. The no, no, thought no, yeah. that that could be happening irks me. And, and we've seen this too often. And again, we're, we're just, some of this is speculation. Some of this is using what we've, we've watched unfold over his first three seasons in the league um, and, and using that to form and, and drive opinion here. Um, but man, that, that's, that's highly concerning to me if that's the case. Well, it, like, let, let me put it in this, in this context. In some ways it happens all the time, right? So yeah. you're not going to, you're not going to go out and sign a mega inside linebacker, right? And then, and then, because you have Roquan Smith, right? Or you're not going to go out and get a first round quarterback, right? Because then Lamar's like, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, it, it's the same thing that happened when Joe, when they drafted Lamar Jackson. Then all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, you keep saying you believe in Joe, but you just spent a first round pick on, on a quarterback. So it happens all the time, right? The problem is, is that in my view, Bateman has, and this is where the debate comes in. In my view, Bateman hasn't earned that, right? Joe Flacco no longer earned not having competition, right? Roquan Smith currently does earn that. And so all the time it happens in the NFL. Sure. And, and that's why, that's why we saw the Bears trade fields to the Steelers because they didn't want the, they're going to, they're going to take a quarterback and they yeah. didn't want him to feel. So, so if this isn't like special treatment per se, that I'm talking about with Bateman, I'm not trying to make it. Uh, I don't know if it's coddling. I don't may, maybe it is, but it's done all the time in the NFL. And so you can go that route with it. I, I and, and that's fine. That's a fine opinion, but I just see it happening all the time. I'm just saying, I don't know that Rashad has earned that in my view, but listen, if he ends up going off, doesn't get injured, then I'm then we're we all win. Yes. Uh, like I've said from the beginning, I wish they got somebody in here that would push him. And so far, while I think Reynolds, uh, listen, I like Reynolds. By the way, I like him a, a bit more than I liked Gallup. 
because Gallup has that has not recovered from injury history. Whereas Reynolds, uh, he's been pretty durable, but he does have those NFC uh, championship game drops. You know, yeah. like when you when when you asked when you asked the Detroit fans, how do you feel? Well, like, how is this guy? And they're like, they constantly use the word solid. They liked him as a number three, solid number three, but then cost us the trip to the Super Bowl. That's what they say. So it's similar to what people were saying about Aguilar, right? Solid guy, but drops in big moments. And Aguilar last year overcame that. So I kind of, I do like Reynolds, the idea of adding Reynolds. I like him as a player. I like him as a number three, maybe, maybe competing with Aguilar for number three. Um, so I like the addition, but it's not what I was hoping for, which is that they would bring in legit competition for Rashad. Cause I don't right. think he's earned it yet, but I think they're going to go that way because he's a first round pick. And because of what they've seen on tape that he's getting open and that it's just like, we're going to, we're going to give him it. We're going to give him his, his shot for real. The question becomes, are they going to give him the payday? And that's a perfect segue to a decision that looms here for Eric DaCosta and the Ravens front office. So as I tweeted out yesterday, which got plenty of reaction here because of how polarizing like 300 comments on this one. Oh man. I didn't even expect, I mean, we're, we're, we're not very close to May 2nd, right? Like, right. I mean, it's coming up, but for, for this to be as, as hot pressed you know, as it was, I was a little bit surprised, but that just shows you just how polarizing of a figure Rashad's been through his first few years in Baltimore. So if you are Eric Tacosta, we'd love to hear from from you guys in the in the live chat. Are you picking up Rashad's fifth year option, which comes in at fourteen point three four five million dollars? The deadline to do so is May second. Now I had to kind of educate myself, Sarah, in terms of how that number is uh, accounted for, right? And so first and foremost, before we get there, Dev Panchwa, who writes for Russell Street Report and is a fan of our show, we're a fan of his. He kind of put some things into perspective here, and he looked at, is Rashad worth that number next year? And he goes, I mean, quote unquote, worth is so relative when guys like Darnell Mooney are making $13 million uh, APY, average per year. I'm not saying he's making it all in one season. The point is, this really isn't a crazy figure for him in this economy, and he has a chart for our audio-only audience here who has a bunch of different names that and and where where these players fall, you know, Marquise Brown's deal, Jalen Waddle at the top of the list, you know, Cortland Sutton, DeAndre Hopkins, things of that nature. Like it, this is strictly for comparison purposes to show you that for his production, Rashad's that number if they were to pick up the option is not crazy compared to the current market in in 2024. So what what I looked at is and this was from in, in February, when Tom Pelissero of NFL Network outlined the fifth-year option numbers for 2021 first-round picks, which which we know is not only Rashad, but Adafi Owe as well from a few years ago. And let me go big screen, too, because this is a little bit – these these numbers are a little small. So, anyway, Rashad falls in a category of no pro balls, and, and he didn't meet the playing time categories. So you see it there on the bottom of the screen. The wide receiver number is 14.345 million. Right? Out a uh, linebacker is 13.251. Now you might be asking, well what do you mean? What 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 does that mean that, that they didn't meet the criteria? And so here you are. Here are your tiers for for fifth year options. You've got multiple pro bowls, one pro bowl, uh playing time based on different metrics, 75% or greater in two of their first three seasons, an average of 75% or greater over all three seasons, 50% or greater over all three seasons. Rashad didn't hit those marks. And then basic, that's your final tier. And that's what Rashad falls into. Now, just to give you some perspective in that year's class, again, we're going back to 2021, led by Jamar Chase, who's proven to be that guy. Uh, and, and certainly kind of reaffirms why Cincinnati chose to, to pick him fifth overall that year. Jalen Waddell, Devontae Smith, Kadarius Tony, and Rashad Bateman were your first round wide receivers in 2021. Tony and Bateman, Sarah, were the only ones that hit the basic category. Waddell and Smith were playtime, and of course Jamar leads the way with multiple Pro Bowls. So, so why do I why do I bring all of this up? Well, they they have a big decision to make, Sarah, and. You know, to me, it's like you, you go back and forth. Are they going to pick up both fifth-year options, Bateman and Oway? 
Or will they say, you know what? I love the development that we've seen now from Adafi. The sack production hasn't been there. But, man, he took a big step forward last year, especially in the pressure department. We love Chuck Smith. We believe in Chuck Smith, our new guru, from a pass rush specialist standpoint. And you know what? Let's see what Bateman does. We're not going to pick up that option. We're going to retool through the draft. We're going to retool through free agency. And and let's see how the chips fall. They'll, They'll fall as they may. That's how I would go if if I'm Eric and company. But I also understand, and Dev made a good point, that market-wise right now, when you compare his production or lack thereof, it's not far off if you were to pick it up. I disagree. Based on some based on some of the players like like a Darnell Mooney, for example. No, the production he's putting up though is is like what what was what was Rashad Bateman's numbers last year? Not good. Here, I have them right here. It was, yeah, okay. Nothing special. Let's so see. He had 367 yards. Where does his? Where, where, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm wondering. What do you mean, 367 yards, and one touchdown is is matches up how to 50, 14 million? Well, I think he was comparing it to like Darnell Mooney, for example. That's what he had in his tweet. Like the numbers. The numbers don't in any way, obviously, warrant a fifth-year option number. But that's why that's why I'm confused change, when you but. say like there might be one guy that's being over overpaid, but Nelson Aguilar, and again, he's he because he's a third wide receiver, he's drawing different cornerbacks, and you know it's a bit different, so it's not a complete apples to apples per uh, comparison. Yeah. But he just got um, one year for three point seven five. Here's and why he had, he's saying this, though. I just sorry to cut you off. I just no, pulled up Dar- Darnell Mooney's numbers from uh-huh. from 2023 in Chicago, and he had 31 receptions for 414 yards. What do we have for Rashad? 32 for 367. Yeah, well, so I mean, anyway. that's one guy, though. That's sure, that's sure, one guy. Sure. So no, Rashad's production last year. That's the statement I'm disagreeing with. Is is like is not worth 14 million at all. No, Nobody no, would say no. that. I, I mean. Not at all. So, um, where are you with Owe? Owe, I could, I would, I would be open to to picking that up because of the upside, because of where he's trending towards, because of how young they are in that room. Yeah. Right. Like, sure you sure you want Clowney back, but we don't know. I mean, the Jets might give him a bag for all we know. So. Well, I, I guess let, let me put it this way. Neither one of these guys are slam dunks, right? Like there's some guys Adafi was a basic category too, by the way. Right, 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 right. So like when Ty, for example, when Tyler Linderbaum or when uh Hamilton comes to their fifth years, if Pick the Ravens up. haven't already extended them with a with a long term contract, those two are slam dunks. Yes. Neither one of these guys are slam dunks. I've already been on the record. I would not do it for Rashad. I don't think even if he were to, cause again, it's about, it's not just what you've done. You're, you're, you can't fully dismiss the history. Um, but it's more about what you project them to do. And so the history is in there a little bit for me, but let's, but I've already said what I project him to do. And this is under him getting, staying healthy all year and getting more involved. I still think that Isaiah Likely and Mark Andrews and Zay Flowers and Aguilar and who knows who they draft or whatever is going to impact his ceiling. And so I still feel like even in a great scenario, and I'd be really happy if Rashad ended with around 800, 850 yards and like four touchdowns, right? Uh, But even with that, I wouldn't say, okay, that's enough for the fifth-year option. So I would not give him the fifth-year option. Uh, However... If he starts balling out super early, then I'm going to him and just trying to do a, a long-term extension yeah, in the extension. middle of the season when nobody right. else can do it. So right. Ad- Ad- Odafi Owe, again, not a slam dunk. Uh, but they don't – the cupboard is more bare <laughs> at yeah. at uh, pass rusher, so I might lean lean towards it for him. Right, when you look at the two – like when you look at pass catchers as a whole and then pass rushers, like – one is unlike one is not like the other. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. and so Odafe hasn't come through with as many sacks, but there's a lot, a, a lot of other stuff he does do. Yeah, and yeah. as as Sidarian Smith in the live chat just noted here too, always been more available. 
Um, yeah. Availability has been one of his check marks. And Rashad, unfortunately, through three seasons, even though he's coming off his first full healthy one, that's not been the case. So anyway, I think we're in agreement. I think we just kind of, you know, had a little bit of good back and forth there yeah. and du- took a deep dive into some uh, some decisions that loom. I mean, granted, they'll probably be made after the draft. They may already be made in Eric's mind. You never know. Probably are, maybe. But, you know, the draft is, what, f- five or six days prior to that deadline? So yeah. we'll see. May 2nd, deadline for the fifth-year options. April 25th or so, I think April 25th, opening night. And before we continue and get into the cornerback discussion, Mm -hmm. let's actually just quickly, because I'm remembering that I had this in here, and I just want to keep reminding folks that our first ever marathon draft party live stream is on the books. And April 25th, opening night of the NFL draft at 7 o'clock, doors will open at Soundstage in downtown Baltimore, right in the Inner Harbor across the street from Power Plant. Sarah's flying in for Columbus for this event. We're super, super fired up about it. Uh, Catering will be provided by our friends at Clean Cuisine, premium tailgate buffet, cash bar, different memorabilia and giveaways. Past and present players are going to be showing up. So should be a really fun night to kind of get ready and, of course, take another step closer to the 2024 season. And the Ravens are currently slated to select 30th overall. Tickets are available right now in the show notes below. We'd love to see you and yours there and can't wait to have you back in the Maryland area, partner. It's going to be a blast. Absolute blast. I'm sitting here trying to figure out who this new cornerback is that we just got news right before we were to go live. Yeah. Tell us what you know. Well, so do you want to go there before we go to? to yeah, yeah, I would go there. I would go there first for sure. Okay. So just a short while before, I mean like minutes. That's why we came on six minutes late, to be honest with you. Jeff Zarebeck tweeted out that the Ravens are signing cornerback Kadar Hallman. Uh, He's most recently been on the Houston Texans. He's a former sixth-round pick for the Green Bay Packers, played in 17 games for Houston last year, started just one of those, Uh, also played in 18 games, including one start for Green Bay earlier on in his career. He's 29, and I guess the question becomes here, is this depth? Is this a camp body? What is the the vision for Kadar in Baltimore and, and what's up with the timing of it? Yeah, I want to know. Uh, I'm just trying to find out, is he inside, outside? I mean, I'm assuming he's an outside corner, right? Like, because the Ravens are stacked on the inside. So we're just going to have to, you know, come circle back around to this to, to find out more about him. Um, one start last year. What would you say, a six-rounder? Former six-rounder. Yep. So yeah, we've got more. Yeah, not not more a lot of digging answer. to do on him. <laughs> he definitely have some more digging to do. Um, and it's uh, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mel Trap wants to know: Can he play wide receiver? Uh, Ravens, the Ravens do need another outside corner, by the way. So I, I don't know if he feels that. Or we're, I mean, there's no mention of money, uh, all of that. So there's there's a lot still to learn, which is like really anticlimactical because as we know yesterday I had said that I would love the Ravens to target Xavier Howard who was a a post June 1 cut to make to save some money for the Miami Dolphins um coming off of a a foot injury but I don't know that it's you know serious <laughs> people in the in the comments who what's that what's that meme that meme uh, with Snoop Dogg. They're like, who? That's that's yeah. kind of where we're at right now with with this new signing right here. So and hey, full transparency, right? When these things come out minutes before we're going live, and we already have our show fully taken care of, we're kind of right there with you. You know, like <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it's like if 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 it was like Galloway, right? Who came on minutes before? We could speak to that, but I just I just do not know who he is. So anyway. Um, so yesterday I had talked about Xavier Howard being a good fit, especially cause he said he's looking for a Super Bowl and not money. And so as soon as I hear that, I'm sure Eric DeCoste is like, Oh, you don't want a lot of money. Let's talk. Let's talk. Right. Uh, Howard. So anyway, I was watching a segment on NFL live ESPN and they were doing their best fits. And of course they're like best fit for Xavier Howard is Kansas city chiefs. And I'm like, get off, get off. I was the, I said it first, you know, cause they think that Sneed, 
uh, Legere Sneed might be moving on from Kansas City. So, but they did have a different guy who I don't hate either, to be honest with you, that they feel like would fit the Ravens. Yeah. Uh, and I know that you guys will know his name more than you would know Kadar Holman. So here we go. Well, give us a fit for Stefan Gilmore. Love him going to the Baltimore Ravens, a team that, again, battled injuries mm. at cornerback last year. Rocky Sin, Marlon Humphrey were down early in the year or during the summer. They had to sign Arthur Mollett, who had a great year for them. Ronald Darby, Ronald Darby just left. They need to meet a guy who can step in and be an outside corner for them on early downs. If they want to blitz and they want to play man coverage, Gilmore can hold up as well. I think Humphrey's best kind of playing outside on early downs, moving inside, playing the slot in passing downs. Gilmore gives you a lot of flexibility. He's a mature veteran. He's a good tackler. Uh, to me, I think just a, a win now player for a win now team in Baltimore. This makes a lot of sense, especially for a defense that seems to incorporate veteran free agents near the end of free agency at the end of every year who end up having great seasons for them. Uh, and I think Gilmore would continue that trend. Uh, Bill alluded to his ability to play man coverage, which, you know, the Ravens certainly play a fair amount of. They blitz a lot. But I also like it for this stage in his career because uh, he would come from a very cover one heavy Dallas defense to a Ravens defense where he'd be playing more quarters. He would have more safety help from their elite safety duo. So I like it for him as well as he gets a bit older. Uh, to me, this makes a ton of sense. And perhaps a little bit like more plug and play opportunity there versus the uncertainty that comes with, you know, a rookie and an already aside from Marlon young cornerback room, you know? Yeah. To be honest, Bobby, like, I don't think the Ravens could go wrong with either of these guys. I, you know, I liked, I still do like Xavier and Howard. Uh, what I, what at the end of the day, I don't know that if, now that they're out there signing Kadar Holman, who knows, who knows where EDC's head is at, by the way, you, core special teamer for Houston, by the way, I've been digging into him okay, during, during that, that segment. So, you know, okay. I, he, he might be, I don't think anybody thinks he's, he's a needle mover, but I just looked into some stuff and yeah, he was, he was okay. a special teamer. For if this is like Houston. a special teams move along with Chris board. Great. Yeah. Great. Okay. So now yeah. I feel good that we're still having this conversation about yeah. Yeah. Gilmore and, and Xavier. As we see here, they, they made it official yesterday. Chris board was signed. He officially signed his contract and so did Arthur Mallette, who would be on the inside there. Yeah. Uh, so, but, but back between the, the conversation of, of, of Gilmore or Xavier, cause you obviously wouldn't get both. And I don't know that they're going to try to target either, but it sure seems smart, man. These guys yeah. are still out there. You seems like you could get a good deal. Xavier already said he's not looking for a ton of money. Here's kind of like the difference between the two. And I, again, I wouldn't hate either one, especially cause you're bringing him in as number three. Xavier's a bit younger, 30. Gilmore's 33. Gilmore's still playing really Damn, well. Gilmore's 33? Yeah. Wow. Check check this out. Did, did you pass the uh here we go? Here's look at this. So this on stuff. the right, on the right is Xavier. On the left is Gilmore. Look how many years he has under his belt. Let's go big screen here. Look at that. What are we looking at here? Wow. So left, left is Gilmore, as you can tell, because he's with <laughs> Buffalo, New England, then went Carolina, Indianapolis, and Dallas. He played well last year in Dallas been fairly durable i mean look at that mostly durable he had 2021 looks like he played a bit less but still made the pro bowl that's what the asterisk is for right um so what i like about gilmore is that he's still going strong i think he fits the culture because he's been playing in cold teams, Buffalo, New England, and he just is like ready for the December and January foot. I feel like he fits AFC North football really well. Yeah. So I would like that, but he's a bit older. Xavier, you know, coming from Florida, you, you never know. Uh, he's also coming off the foot again. If it's, I don't know that it's that serious, but Gilmore doesn't have any lingering injuries. Um, Xavier, I feel like has those great ball skills, but I like, you know, so you couldn't go wrong with either. And I'm hoping EDC's talking to him. I, I really do. I, I just feel like you could get both one at a, at a pretty good deal and you need the outside cornerback de depth. Uh, you cannot rely on any cornerback to make it through all 17 games. Plus you need three guys out there often anyway. Uh, I, I, I would like to see it, Bobby. I would okay. like to see it. I, I would too. I think that. That would fit the Ravens' mold. And like yeah. I said a second ago, I, there is there is some uncertainty when you when you want to go after a rookie and what's already a young room aside from Marlon, and instead 
guys that have been around that know different systems that would be plug and play, so to speak, that feels safer or more immediate than the develop than the potential development that could come along with a rookie. And, and I've talked about other positions. We've talked about this with offensive line. We've talked about this elsewhere. Like you want to have, I know the Ravens, I know them. They like to have all glaring holes filled before the draft so that they can truly yeah. base things off of best player available. Right. And to me, there's, that would be, that would be one where you'd be like, I don't know if, if, if Marlon Humphrey and Stevens will make it through the whole year, we need to add one more and then I won't feel like I need to, you know, reach in the draft. Right. Right. I, love well, this, I love this quote. By me the way. too. Yeah. One of these, one of these guys that was just recently signed, like we said, Arthur Mollette, who was definitely, you know, he and Ronald Darby were two of your, your unsung heroes a season ago, Arthur went on Glenn Clark's show in Baltimore. And uh, he was asked about some Ravens fans not knowing anything about him before arriving in Baltimore, even though he used to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. And he was quoted for saying, look, I don't hold grudges. I'm not a superstar. You don't have to know me. But when I do strap on the helmet, I make sure you're going to know who number 10 is. The underdog gets his bone too. That is, can I get a chef's kiss? I mean, that uh, is, it, it just that gets came, me fired up over when, when he says, I'm going to make sure you know number 10, it just brings me back when I still had hope the Ravens were going to win that AFC championship game when after they had been, you know, given crap to, to Justin Tucker and then over on the sideline, Millette takes on like six different Chiefs and he's like, let's go. And I just love it. You don't need to know who I am. I, I love that, Bobby. Like, oh, oh, I love it. You don't need to know who I am. But when you watch me play, you're going to see number 10. And I remember when the Ravens originally signed him last year, they were like, basically said the reason why they signed him is because he was giving him fits when he was with the Steelers. And like, so the Ravens knew who number 10 was or whatever number he was over there. Dude's a total dog. Total dog. And I just love that mindset. The underdog gets his bone too. <laughs> we didn't even know he was going to be in the picture for the 2023 season this time last year. The same could be said about Ronald Darby. The same could be said, even though he's a much different, bigger icon in Jadavian Clowney, Kyle Van Noy, right? You know what but else? You four, know who we, oh, we overlook all the time and saying we, like, we also didn't know? Yeah. Let's not forget when the Ravens signed Rock Yassin at, at the following press conference, John Harbaugh said they were moving Stevens to safety full time. <laughs> yeah. Like yep. he was supposed to be a safety. And then he went and started 17 games at cornerback. Yep. Like what would the Ravens have been without him? Just an unsung hero. Also think about that going complete 180. <laughs> he was confident enough to share that. <laughs> and then that was, yeah. Brandon was Brandon absolutely fits that category, by the way, unsung yeah. hero. Yeah. Right. Not talked about a lot. Extremely versatile. Bailed them out last year. And think about how many of those members, how many of those types of players embodied the defense, like were represented on the defense. Arthur, Ronald, Brandon, Jadavian, Kyle, meaning Van Noy. Like these dudes weren't several of those you had no clue were going to be in the picture this time last year. And they ended up serving key roles. Got some super chats that we want to get to that have come in throughout the show. Let us know, by the way, how you we'll do, enjoy we'll this format on the other side of these. Yeah, for sure. All right, all right, all right. For sure. Paul Anthony Moss goes back to one of our early topics related to the fifth year option discussion. And okay. Paul says, I'm not picking up the option, meaning for Rashad. Mm -hmm. Zay Flowers is already ahead of him. And Lamar seems to work best with receivers that have improv skills when running routes. Interesting. I, I agree actually with that. Uh, I think that that's part of the chemistry thing going on. I would like to see Rashad be able to, at the same time, I do think, I do, right. But I, at the same time I do, like, I don't want to put this all totally on Rashad. I mean, the chemi chemistry, chemistry no, is a two way street, right? Chemistry is a two way street. Now that being said, the, your wide receiver needs to adapt more to your MVP quarterback <laughs> for sure, but it is a two way street. And we've talked about this before. We talked about it with Steve young, like the more on time stuff, so that Lamar doesn't have to be Superman. Like, like we don't always want to put that on his shoulders. 
and he he will help himself out not having to he can just pull it out here and there when it's absolutely needed by having more on schedule stuff and Rashad's a good guy to do that with Rashad is a great route runner and he's going to be where he needs to be and he's going to get open so so uh, man I would uh, I would love to see them on time with each other for sure yeah that, uh, you wonder if some of that was the aftermath of the Liz Frank like maybe lacking some of the suddenness, lacking some of the explosiveness that we saw from him. We all remember the slant to the house against Miami a couple of years ago. And you're thinking, wow, that yeah. dude's got some straight line speed. Like that's what the Ravens thought they were getting when they drafted him out of Minnesota. And then availability just became such a, a detriment. You know, it was such a a blow to every to his development, really. Yeah. And that's why we're having this. That's why it's become such a polarizing conversation. He's a first round receiver. He's been a little dramatic at times. He has caused stirs. Yet the upside and the potential we all know is there. It's 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 the conversation's not going away. Even if they you know No. Well, we don't as much as I've said I like that what I project, I want nothing more for Rashad to just come into his own. Absolutely. I would love it. Adrian Ortega, all the love from Mexico City. Sarah and Bobby really love this new format of the show. Nice. Go Ravens. I thought all we had was Manuel in, in Mexico City. I didn't know Adrian was there, Adrian's, too. They got to have like a Mexico City Ravens <laughs> roost over there. Love that. I'm pretty sure there is a Facebook page, if I'm not mistaken. So that's pretty cool. Brian Walters wants to know if I got Kim's number, the girl from the AFC pregame. AFC pregame. Oh, the AFC title pregame show. I was mingling a little bit. No, there were no numbers exchanged that day. Your but. dating life. Is entertainment for me for days. The, oh my gosh. <laughs> the dating life, I'm sure everybody's looking for an update. We're not going to spend too much time on it, but I've been down in Orlando for the last couple of weeks, visiting family, doing a working vacation, and I've been ripping hinge dates for those of you who've been wondering, but uh, the search continues. I haven't found that one yet. Maybe one day. BP says that uh, Michael Crabtree, John Brown, as I as I transition, uh, <laughs> Crabtree, John Brown, Seth Roberts, Sammy Watkins, Des Bryant, Deshaun Jackson, Demarcus Robinson, Laquan Treadwell. Here's a reminder how they have <laughs> never learned. I want to cry for real. Wait, I want BP to come back into the comments. Totally, totally get it. He, you know, there's a couple hits in there that he's he's glossing over. Like there was, it's been a while. But Steve Smith, you know, he was over 30. Um, Derek Mason. I'm now going really far back. <laughs> that worked for a minute. Wait a Is there second anybody here. else that worked? Sarah, look at this, though. Well, sorry, sorry to cut you off mid-thought, but look at this. Then he follows up with this. All we do is complain. Why can't we be a happy <laughs> fan base? He's, he's playing with us today. He's trolling us. Well, and I do, I do. Here's the thing, though. The rate, what he says, like they haven't learned. They did overpay for OBJ. Let's not forget. And and yeah. here's what here's what stinks. Here's what let me say this. Here's what goes against the crowd, who I don't necessarily disagree with, but only to a certain extent. It hurts the crowd that says you gotta overpay for a wide receiver to get him here, right? And then the Ravens finally do it with OBJ, and. Yeah. It didn't work out like that the way we all work. wanted. It wasn't it terrible. Work. Out of all the people that are still available, I wouldn't hate OBJ coming back. I just know it's not going to happen, right? Like yeah. because if it was going to happen, you should have done it before all this dead money hit. Like it's not going to happen. But of those guys that are like still available, it's like why wouldn't OBJ be in the conversation of you know whatever? So, um, but that's what's going to hurt this crowd is it's like pay for a wide receiver, pony up. You're being cheap. Da 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 da. Then the Ravens go and sign. Odell Beckham Jr., the whole NFL world says you overpaid for him. And then the NFL world says we were right. And all we can say is, well, but he got Lamar here. And that's true. Yeah. But like in terms of production, it's like, well, they overpaid and look what happened. And so all it's going to be, it's just going to reinforce the, the Ravens being like, see, we're not going to overpay. We can get the same production, which is which has been your point. Like, I do think that a Josh Reynolds couldn't put up the same production as OBJ right. at a, at what, a third of the cost i was gonna say so 15 no. million price tag last year for the following numbers 35 receptions for 565 yards in 14 games six of which he started and he was targeted 64 times some of those were forced jobs in my opinion but um but i'm with you whether it be a reynolds 
whether it be a day two pick at, at the at the wide receiver position, it's realistic to think that for a fraction, to your point, a fraction of that cost, you can bring you can replace that production next year. I'm also seeing questions in the in the comments, Bobby, like what happened to Gallup? I don't think there's been an official report, but I think it's pretty clear that he likely left without a deal. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. why they brought in Reynolds. And maybe the Ravens made that clear. Maybe they already had, because they happened so quickly close to each other. My guess is the Ravens had both set up back to back with no yeah. promises. Stockpiling, you know, yeah, doing yeah. their doing their due diligence. Maybe Reynolds walks without one too, and then they revisit it. I mean, we've seen that in the past. You don't always have to walk out the door with with deals, right? Yeah. So so anyway, just wanted Patience. to bring that comment up there. I'm sure there's more. But uh, let's get to some quick hits, and maybe we can. If you guys want to ask, away, we got a couple extra minutes, so we're going to get to some quick hits right now. If you have any Q and A that uh, that hasn't been answered or hasn't been addressed or pulled up on the screen, hit us now. If you want to make it a, a super chat donation, then you'll obviously get priority. But we're going to do some quick hits here for a couple minutes. All right. So I love this our quarterback, man. This is I love our quarterback. So oh, uh, this girl, J girl, okay, <laughs> tweets. You ain't black if you never ate this. And it's a picture of it. Uh, it looks like Godzilla's arm. Like what? Is that an alligator arm? Is that what that is? Some sort of reptile's arm in what looks to be a soup, like a seafood soup. It looks like. And uh, I'm struggling even describing it. Like it's a ginormous arm that doesn't even fit in the bowl. Like, is it an alligator? Somebody in the comments help us out. So <laughs> Lamar, I love him on Twitter, man. He is so much fun. He quotes retweet. He quote retweets this, or should I say, quote X is this? I don't know how to do it. Yeah, I've noticed Ugh. you've been better at like calling it by its new name, and I've been terrible. Well, I don't um, want to. I just feel like I name. have to. Yeah, it's the yeah. Name. I, mean, I want to do I, Twitter. Do it, it rolls too. off the tongue. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, Lamar reposts it and writes. Whole time I've been white. <laughs> with, like, <laughs> with a smart people lost emerging. it. At so that. it is a gator. Okay, I said alligator, right? Like, is gator and alligator? It's it's the same thing, right? For sure, for yeah, sure. Okay, okay. I mean, yeah. I know crocodiles are different. Um, so that is crazy. <laughs> I I just love our quarterback. That's all I have to say. The guy is the guy's as good as it gets. All right, we did all the other quick hits. He and Kyle Hamilton have been funny on Twitter. This this. By the way, yeah, just if you're just tuning in, the one signing from today as we continue to uh, to make these live streams during times where there's always news coming down for whatever reason. <laughs> uh, minutes before we came on, the Ravens signed a uh, journeyman NFL cornerback by the name of uh, Kadar Hallman. He played Holman. with Houston last year. Holman. Hol but the we, Hallman, we practiced yeah. it beforehand, yeah. <laughs> we did. We did. Well, yeah, p clearly I did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But anyway, yeah, he's he was a core special teamer a year yeah. ago for Houston, and he's been around the league. So not sure that's going to be anything that probably I, I don't see us revisiting that anytime soon, barring something unforeseen. So how about that? All these people are like, yeah, I'm white too. <laughs> Looking uh, at that thing, oh, you and me, or not yeah. that black? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, like, there's not. <laughs> Look, I'm one of those guys who can be down in Florida for two weeks and you'd never know it. I mean, yeah. on, like, no, I knew it. I saw, I can see the red in your face. I can see but, it, but it's just classic. But you have like, to cover up, but you are exactly like my husband. My husband will burn. I can get a tan, uh, but my husband just burns. It's not even fair. Oh, in fact, you know, I love like the Florida or Caribbean vacations. The way we sit up on the beach is he goes to a tree. If uh, there's no like umbrellas <laughs> around and I'm like in the sun, like soaking it up. I'm, you know, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. You live the good life there, you know? <laughs> But hopefully I'll have less wrinkles in 50 years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I still put the hat on. You got to cover it. Okay, good. Yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Good. Can't have, That's the other can't thing. Have, can't have the, the wrinkles. The Florida Trossets. Oh, man. Like, at this Wait. point, those in their <laughs> 60s and 70s, they're getting stuff removed from their bodies every day from years and years. Where, like, like the yeah. my aunts used to tell me, they what, what was the old trick back in the day? They'd, like, lay out on um, – was it tin foil or – what would you lay out on to like literally burn to the crisp? Oh yeah, no, where they put like the oh, the it? mirror or something? Just something know. so oh, unhealthy. Something so so unhealthy. Um. Anyway, Justin Holt, thanks for the love. Smash that like button if you've been enjoying our new format. If you've been enjoying our content, you can join the Vault Patreon community by visiting the link that we have included in the show notes below. 
For example, Jimmy Rice and Richard Harris are signed up for our monthly shout out tier. So for four ninety nine a month, they get one shout out per month, and we appreciate them for supporting us on the back end of what we're doing. So shout out Jimmy, shout out Richard. Visit Patreon.com forward slash Ravens Vault Podcast if you're interested in doing the same. I know we've been teasing it a lot, but we're super. I mean, we're just really getting really excited about this event that we have coming up next month. So bear with us. But Thursday, April 25th, 7 o'clock, our first ever in-person marathon draft party live stream, downtown Baltimore, Soundstage. That's 124 Marketplace, right across the street from Power Plant. And Sarah, you're flying in from Columbus, and we just cannot wait to, to host this event, team up with Soundstage, team up with our catering partner, at Clean Cuisine, offer you $40 tickets that gets you in the door, that gets you all access to their premium tailgate buffet. There's a cash bar. There's going to be past and present players, memorabilia, giveaways, and hopefully a bunch of other nuggets as well as we really start to kind of sink our teeth into the planning part of this process. It's going to be a blast. I can't wait. Can't yeah, wait to sure. come back to Baltimore. Get your tickets. Come enjoy the draft with us. For sure. Uh, Robert N says, answer my question, Bobby. Dang it. What was his question? Oh, what's the question? <laughs> I Eileen went to says, growing up. I baby oil it. with iodine was our suntan lotion. Oh my gosh. No, here we go. I found his. Okay. I think it's his. What does he say? What do we do if Henry gets hurt? Oh, shoot. My thing is covering it. I got you. Okay. Question. What do we do if Derrick Henry gets hurt? Do we lose the explosion on offense this year? with our mediocre wide receiver room with the exception of Zay. Well, I'd say it's mediocre right now, aside from the tight ends. I think it's above mediocre. Uh, if you look at the statistics, though, from a year ago, yeah, it's, but, it's, but, pretty, but it's, it's pretty average. I hear you. I totally hear you. The, the Ravens, I know people don't want to hear this, and I understand it, but – the Ravens, as much as they put an emphasis last year, the emphasis was on m trying to marry a run first team with a passing yeah. game, right? Yeah. But it's still run first. The volume isn't yeah. there. Yeah. You have to look at, I'm sorry. I know you don't want to hear this. You guys just want to see 1200 yard receivers. I'd like to see it too, but it's based off of efficiency. And that's, that's what I was getting at with Jeff Rebeck's tweets. Like he's saying like who, who had in that when he wrote like, Look at the targets that Aguilar and Likely and yeah. Bateman and OBJ all had. None of them had a lot of targets. Yeah, it's it's that's not, part of the that's the con. I mean, there's context not, that needs to yeah. be said when you call it average. Which I yeah, I'm with you. They and, need and to improve again, it. If we're talking about just wide receiver, then yes, maybe that's more mediocre. But I guess I was thinking again the way Jeff was saying it for him, he sees it as pass catchers as whole, mostly yes. because. And not, not that that should justify having Mark Andrews and Isaiah likely should not justify having a, a wide receiver one. That being said, they still impact targets for sure. For you know? sure. And Isaiah, what was the, what was the bill on him coming out of coastal? Oh, he's, he's built like a tight end, but he plays like a wide receiver. That's lived to be true so far. Yep. yep. And, and we'll see if, if they're able to coexist. Can Todd Munkin, if we ever get a chance to talk to him, hopefully this off season, what a question to ask. What a, what, what a compelling answer you would think it would be for him to think about and chew on how can Mark and Isaiah coexist consistently on the field together within your scheme. To me, we don't talk about that enough. We've been talking about Bateman so much, and I think that's a legitimate conversation, which is why we've had it, but we don't talk about that enough. Yep. Like we're going to be living in a different world. If, if likely and Mark on the field at the same time in the same game can produce for sure, it's, it's, it's off. It'll be off the charts. hundred percent. Well, we, I will, I promised everybody that I will, I haven't forgotten. I will follow up with Todd. We've let things kind of slow down for him a little bit. And that follow up text is coming in soon. So for sure, <laughs> Sam, <laughs> Sam Reese question. If you're like Sarah and you don't burn, what 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 is it? I do burn. No, no, he's saying if oh, you general. if anybody out there is like Sarah, don't burn. And I won't say I don't burn, like I can burn if I don't wear sunscreen or whatever, but my husband can't get tan. Like it can't happen. Like he only burns. So I can burn if I'm not careful, but 
Um, but yeah, no, I, I, and listen, I start, wait, go back to this question. We didn't get to the end of it. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, where do you go here? Come on in, Sam. Okay, Sam, so, it said, so say it out loud for the audio. Folks. Okay. If you're like Sarah and you don't burn, which I do, I just clarified, <laughs> will you get skin cancer, not wearing sunscreen? Currently I'm in Arizona, so it might be looking grim. First of all, I already know in my family, you should know in your family, there is some history of skin cancer, mm. uncles and stuff like that. So wear the sunscreen. But in the beginning of the year, I always start with like the most you can get mm -hmm. high SPF. And then as I work and then I can work my way down. That's what I would suggest. And always cover that face if you don't want to have wrinkles. Can what you does believe? What does 410 say? We can need believe over on the can, vault. Yeah. Can, can you believe over 3,000 people are listening to us talk about our skin? <laughs> we only do it at the end. If you got to go back to work because it is one o'clock, we only do it at the end after quick hits. But I like to get a little bit personal at the end here. It's the best time of year to do it. No, we definitely need to get RG3. We, I know we can get RG3 back. Ray, I just don't believe in it. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been, I, I, he's gone cold on me in the DMs, if we're being honest. That's how, yeah. that's how it first came to, to fruition during the playoff, right before the playoffs. But, um, you know, hey, as we continue to grow, hopefully we'll we'll keep presenting opportunities for these people that are make, make you know that makes it worth their time. And yeah. uh, hey, you know, I tweeted this out the other day, and if you guys think it's it's a good thing, like you should mention you should mention him because we know he checks his mentions. But I think it'd be awfully cool to line up a sponsor for a weekly segment in season with Jeff Zarebe. He This is interesting to me because a lot of that? people did tag him. He never responded. Not he didn't respond. Offline. No. See, that's no. I don't know, Bobby. Because also, by that. the way, I don't know. One. I don't know just because he works for the athletic. I don't know that's what that what's like be, with sponsors and all that kind of stuff. There could be regulations what, there. Yeah. There could be He probably also is like, bro, you got my number. Just why didn't you why didn't we have oh, this I know. conversation? I know, I know. That's classic me, just like knee jerk tweeting, you know. <laughs> Classic me. And if, if it is so classic, you. This is this is a look behind our our one. It's so on -one funny because I like yeah. unless it's game day, I like so carefully craft my tweets, and you're like, here we go. Da -da 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 -da. You know, oh, yeah. game day, you got to just keep moving. We're so um, we're, we're we're so, so different, different, but that's why we work. Like, yeah, we do. You know, I think when yeah, I left radio, do. I was like, to hell with all this formality. <laughs> but that's how you built your 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 platform, and I love that yeah. about you. So, um, but. But yeah. Hey Jeff, why don't I just text you about it? <laughs> but now he's uh he's got a couple young ones at home and man, even even trying to get a hold of him is is no, he's is tough because he's just I mean, we all know he's he's the best in the business. I think But I liked where your head was at, like, you know, we'll get you paid, you know, try to get Right. It'd be fun. Yeah. Be fun. Yeah. yeah. But no, nah, just messing with everybody. Like if you want to tag him doing, I think he'd think it was <laughs> I think he, he he would find it funny. So yeah. anyway, just wanna shout out and thank one once more. Uh, who this episode is presented by, and it's one of this month's small business Patreon title sponsors, our friends at uh, s &R Laundry Services. They are a laundry and dry cleaning pickup and delivery service in Baltimore and the surrounding areas. And if you use code BOBBYT20, that's B-O-B-B-Y, T as in Tom, 2-0, you'll get 20% off your next service at checkout. You can visit my cleanmylaundry.com to learn more, and all that information is available in the show notes below. So with that, next time you'll see me, I'll be back in my studio with the Maryland backdrop up north in Baltimore. My, my father and I are driving back on Sunday, That's staring safe. at 15 hours in the face. Oh, I'll be out so, next week. You'll be back in Baltimore. You did right. a working vacation. I told my family I wouldn't do it. Like I'm, I'm taking the spring break with my kids. So I'm, I'm out next week. That's Unless right. something massive comes down. I told you I'll bring my computer, but yep. otherwise next week. Yep. So you yep. exactly well deserved. Can't wait for you to get some time with your family, and uh, we'll continue. I will continue to do the noon live stream format. We're going to get some different voices in. That at least that's my hope yep. for next week, and uh, which kind of helps me, you know, show a little load. And yeah, this is. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you've you've made it to your your time off this 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 off season, and then the next time we'll do that together will be. July 4th when we're going to go dark. So yep. that's kind of how our structure is starting to be. We're, we're two years into this almost. So it's starting to become kind of a, a routine for us and looking forward to obviously really putting our foot on the gas pedal here for draft coverage and getting some different voices and names and faces in here. So anyway, all good. Yeah, I'm all good. Good, good chatting with everybody. Good Friday lunchtime.
Yeah. I don't know. Some people, I bet they're getting, I don't know, Friday at noon. Is, it's going to be hard to go back to work. Final right? stretch. Final stretch, everyone. Right. Five, six minutes after noon. Now it's time to go back. As tempting as it is to extend this another hour. Uh, I'm going to get down to Stewart, Florida, which is not far from Ing. I'm um, not going to be able to catch up with Ingraven, but but message him back and forth with him. We all know he's a South Florida boy, so uh, it's good to be down here. But I'm ready to get back to opening day. Six days out from opening day. Hope to see a lot of you there. And uh, again, we're, we're excited about our event. So get your tickets. All those are available. That link is included in the show notes below. Uh, special thanks to our patrons, our Patreon, small business, Patreon title sponsor, and of course, my my co-host and partner, Sarah Ellison. So I'm Bobby Trossett signing off from this Friday live stream. Have an awesome weekend. And I will talk to you guys on Monday. Partner, I'm sure we'll chat here you know and there we... throughout the vacation. But yeah. you enjoy yourself and we'll catch